So for whatever reason, Judge Judy is Mike Bloomberg's most prominent supporter and surrogate. And, you know, I say that not necessarily because he hasn't received other endorsements. Sure, he's gotten congressional endorsements. He's gotten endorsed from mayors in cities across the country. But she's the only authentic supporter of Mike Bloomberg who hasn't been bought off, as far as I know. Like, the individuals who are running for Congress, the mayors around the country who support him and endorsed him, they were all bought off. Like, he has contributed to them. He helped their political careers. So they're just paying him back for that, effectively. But Judge Judy actually believes in Mike Bloomberg's message, whatever that is. Um, so she really is his most prominent surrogate. The problem with that is she's not the best surrogate. Um, she doesn't do a good job at explaining to voters why Mike Bloomberg is good for them. But what you can see here when she talks about Mike Bloomberg is that he's going to be really good for people like her, who are very, very wealthy. And we've talked about this before, like her defense of Mike Bloomberg it's borderline incoherent, and on television, she comes across as this confident, if not arrogant, you know, really articulate, eloquent person. But when she's trying to explain why we should vote for Bloomberg, it's incoherent. You know, she has nothing but platitudes. And when she was talking to a local Fox affiliate, she tried to defend Mike Bloomberg. She didn't do a great job, but she also took shots at Bernie Sanders and his supporters. And this is honestly, like, almost cringeworthy because she is just, she's so out of touch. Millions of people watch you on TV every day as a judge, and they trust your judgment. Why is this the first time that you've actually endorsed a presidential candidate? Because it was urgent. Because I really believe that America's in trouble. Everybody's angry. Polarized. And it will continue to be polarized unless you have a president who has no agenda other than to do the right thing for the people that he represents. He's, Mike Bloomberg is not an ideologue. He's a doer. He sees a problem. He understands that if you have good education and a solid education as a youngster and as you grow, You'll have the tools to make it. Listen, Mike and I are the product of an American dream. Mike grew up middle class kid, put himself through school. I grew up middle class kid. I, I wasn't as smart as he was. I didn't, I didn't have. I couldn't get into good, to great schools, but I got into okay schools. I was born in Brooklyn, so I have Brooklyn street smarts. And I know that if you give children reasonable building blocks, you give them a fishing pole, they'll always be able to eat. And he understands how to solve that problem. He understands the genesis of it. He understands how to tweak the things that are wrong with America. America doesn't need a revolution. It doesn't need a different, it's the most perfect country in the world. And those people that are trying to change it and revolutionize it are, don't have a chance because I'll fight them to the death. <laughs> don't get on the wrong side of the judge. <laughs> That's the message. That's the message. All right. Listen, Judge Judy is worth an estimated $400 million. At that point, like if you're that rich, why not just retire? Why not just you know, throw your hands up and think, you know what, I'm going to sit this election out. I'm going to kick back because no matter what happens, the outcome of this election isn't actually going to impact my life in any meaningful way. But I mean, if this election does impact her, what, her taxes go up a little bit? Is that really necessary? Does that warrant you, like, coming out here and speaking in favor of Mike Bloomberg and against Bernie Sanders, who's clearly fighting for the working class? Like, is this what you want your legacy to be? Apparently so. And it's just, it's embarrassing. Now, she says that she decided to not sit this out and make an endorsement when she's never done that, quote, because it was urgent, because I really believe America is in trouble. So why is America in trouble? What are the issues that we're dealing with? She doesn't know. She doesn't explain that part. It seems like the only reason why she thinks America is in trouble is because she doesn't like Donald Trump, but at the same time, she doesn't think that a political revolution Bernie Sanders' working-class revolution 
isn't something that's good. In fact, it seems as if she thinks it's a threat. And she tacitly implied that Bernie Sanders is an ideologue. She said, Mike Bloomberg is not an ideologue. He's a doer. But I've got to ask the question, what has he done that's so great for the people of New York City when he was mayor? Stop and frisk? Banning big gulps? Vetoing the minimum wage? He illegally surveilled Muslims. I mean, he did that. He's sexually harassed at least 64 of his female employees. What exactly did he do, Judge Judy, that you think is so wonderful that you would risk your entire reputation on this oligarch? She doesn't know. This really seems like a fuck you, I got mine situation where she just doesn't want her taxes to go up. She doesn't think that the peasants deserve health care or education. She believes that if you pull yourself up by your bootstraps, then uh, you can make it just like she did, just like Mike Bloomberg did. And she says that he understands how to tweak things that are wrong with America. Except tweaking things is not going to suffice. We're facing climate catastrophe. Climate catastrophe. Thousands of people are dying every single year because they don't have health insurance. Tweaking the system isn't going to work. That's not going to make people less demoralized. That's not going to make them less susceptible to, radical, to radicalization, right? More neoliberalism is just further putting us on the path towards fascism. That's, that's just a fact of reality. And that's even if you want to claim that Mike Bloomberg isn't a fascist himself. Because I'm sorry, when you surveil Muslims, when you implement stop and frisk and you turn your city into basically a police state, I don't know what to call that if not fascism. Him and Donald Trump are fascists, albeit for different reasons and maybe to lesser degrees, but they're both fascists. One is arguably more dangerous in certain ways. The other, still dangerous. We just, we don't, we don't really know. So, I mean... Whatever tweaks that Mike Bloomberg wants to implement, it won't suffice. And she says that, you know, America is the most perfect country in the world. Now, again, the reason why she thinks that, the reason why she doesn't want a political revolution is because she's worth an estimated $400 million. In fact, in 2018, she just bought a $9 million mansion in Rhode Island. So, of course, she doesn't want a political revolution. Of course, She's okay with the status quo because look at how comfortable she is. She is living in a mansion. She doesn't want her taxes to go up. She doesn't want the peasants to have health care because she worked for it. She worked for what she has. So pull yourself up by your bootstraps, peasants. Go to law school and become a judge on TV and make a mockery of our judicial system. Do that. Do what Mike Bloomberg did. Just make $50 billion. Go ahead. Do it, peasants. Why haven't you done that yet? Like, this antiquated way of thinking is exactly why anything short of a revolution will not suffice. Because the elites in this country are so out of touch that they can't possibly fathom why people would feel so desperate and radicalized at this point in time. And she vows to uh, fight them to the death, meaning Bernie Sanders supporters. Okay. Uh, Mike Bloomberg says, don't get on the wrong side of the judge. That's the message. Actually, don't get on the wrong side of... A revolution. That's the message that you need to take away. Because we're not going to allow you to buy our democracy. We're not going to allow it. We're not going to sit here and pity these oligarchs who have hundreds of millions of dollars who are clutching their pearls as they see the working class rise up and demand maybe a little bit more than crumbs. So Judge Judy is absolutely disgusting. And if she truly wants to fuck with the power of the people, maybe we organize an advertiser boycott of her show. Maybe we protest outside her studio. Judge Judy doesn't know who she's dealing with because Judge Judy, throughout the entirety of her life almost, has been insulated. She surrounds herself around yes men and yes women, and she's the judge, right? She's the one in control on her television show. Shut up, don't ever talk. Be quiet, peasants. She doesn't like that we're finding our voice in Bernie Sanders. But too bad. Tough. Even if we don't win this election, this movement isn't going away. It materialized, and it's not just going to evaporate into thin air. We're going to be here, and like it or not, we're coming for that wealth, Judge Judy. So I'm sorry if you don't want to pay a slightly higher marginal tax rate, but if you truly think America is the greatest country on the planet, then you can't allow the so-called best country ever, which is perfect, to have 
Thousands of citizens die every single fucking year because they don't have health insurance. You can't allow people to drown in student debt because they just wanted an education to have a chance at success. Unacceptable. So I don't even know what to say. Judge Judy is just... Keep talking because you're only further making the case for us. As more rich people speak out, as more billionaires go on national television and cry, you're only helping to make our case for us. Keep talking. You're helping us.